and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Jace Heimer, our next Jace deck. We're going to be using Jace and Heimer together with Shadow Isles, actually. It's seen uh, most people are trying, I think, Bandle City with this combination, but we're going to go to Shadow Isles where we get Piercing Darkness, just a really good removal spell, um, you know, that costs six, that drain five helps heal our Nexus, helps us stay alive. And I really like how Piercing Darkness can kill a lot of the champions that people are playing right now. People are playing a lot of Jace, Heimerdinger, and Lux, and Piercing Darkness can take down all of those. So that's some good stuff. We also have Glimpse Beyond uh, for some good card draw as well, because, you know, you got to keep your hand filled. Um, so we got some good stuff there. And then also Ixtali Sentinel, a good lifesteal unit that the Darkness is very useful um, that can, uh, you know, help us stabilize as well. So that's some good stuff from Shadow Isles. But besides that, of course, most of these uh, decks and most of what we're dealing with is Piltover and Zaun. So we've got a lot of brand new cards in here. This Pharos Financier has just looked incredible in these other games. Um, we got our Hextech Handler back, trying that again with Heimer. But the thing that I really like about this deck with Hextech Handler and Heimer, since we care so much about six plus cost spells, we're going to be playing Production Surge. And this card is awesome with the Handler if you can start giving them plus one, plus one. And then you can, uh, you know, go wide with this. This is another card that you can play like on round three for your six mana, for your six plus cost spell. Pretty awesome little card there. So uh, combining that all together. All right, so let's get to it. Let's go and try Jace Heimer with Shadow Isles, and we'll see how we do. Plus, the other thing about being in Shadow Isles is the Financier can hit some awesome spells in Shadow Isles, right? Because you got your Ruination, your Harrowing, uh, even Vengeance, that kind of stuff. And then you even could, like, Atrocity somebody, you know, like, that That could honestly happen. Um, or, you know, you get another one of these Piercing Darknesses. There it is. You know, so all these spells like that Shadow Isles has, like it has some really good quality high impact spells you can make with the Financier. All right, so let's get to it. Let's play some Jace Heimer. And here we go. Yeah, that's true. And if we if we level up Jace, then we get to drain 10. Um, it, it'd have to be on a unit that could survive the first drain, the drain five. Um, so that's gonna go, this is gonna go I don't know, I guess Sentinel's actually probably pretty good in this matchup, but I don't really want to keep six drops in hand. But keeping, you know, it's kind of hard to mulligan Heimer. I don't know, I kind of think we're just going to send it all back, to be honest. Um, okay, let's try this out. So we can go, like, Production Surge on three, and then, like, Handler on four. Or we could even just go, like, the Assembly line on three. Go get the shiny dog. Eager Apprentice is perfect. Gives us the body. So we can block the 2 1. Yeah, we still are on pace to uh, play these other cards next round. I'm trying to think which one we want to do, the assembly line or the production surge. And I guess it's I guess it's the assembly line. Just get two three threes. That's good for the two fearsome things here. Because Production Surge can be a lot better later on. I guess we could technically Shock Blast there. I like getting a couple 3-3s. Three okay, so that um, Sandstone Charger just heals, you know, heals their Nexus for 6, basically. Keeps them from taking 6 damage. And they're passing and not even attacking? Alright, I have to just take the pass. I wasn't counting on taking a pass here, but I have to just take a pass, right? Oh, oh, oh. Yep. Yeah, for pr when you production surge for six, you can get some poor hits when it's only for six. So I do like saving production surge if you can and play like these other things because you know for six you're getting two three threes and save this for like ten, eleven, twelve later on. Well, that's too bad. I wish I would have led with the financier first, then. Man, these are good. Harrowing or Shock Blast? I could see this being pretty awesome with Harrowing, like Hextech Handler Harrowing. Let's do it. Let's take Harrowing. I help when I can. Shut up when I can. Oh, no! 
Yeah, heroin could be pretty fun. Yeah, it would be really nice to be able to have Heimer in play and then Production Surge. <laughs> Sometimes Harvey sounds like a bear. <laughs> Growling. That, that was that's Harvey right there that was making all that noise. Man, and they just don't want to attack. I mean, I guess I just keep taking these passes, I guess. Right? Right? So I could, like, you know, play this Forge of Tomorrow and then Shock Blast and get three mana back. But the less that they are lurking, the better, right? It's just... It's so weird. He's lucky to have me, in my opinion. Alright, so now Jace will be leveled up whenever we want to play Jace. We got two production surges. Let's go and just play one so we can kind of get aggressive. Be aggressive. Be, be aggressive. Four. How much? All right. How much damage are we actually doing here? Six, 10, 14, 16. All right. So we can go for lethal. Might as well go for lethal, I guess. Force them to do something. right? Well, how about that? That's the other thing about Production Surge, is you can just get some zero mana challengers and uh, surprise people. So no landmark removal for us, unfortunately. There's always Aftershock, right? And so like, if, if landmark decks start becoming a thing, we could play Aftershock, but for now we don't have it, and therefore this is probably going to be pretty tough. All right, gonna send Eager Apprentice back. So I'm gonna play Financier on two, Forge of Tomorrow on three. I don't really know what we're doing on on four yet. So this I'm looking for. Dawning Shadow is not necessarily bad. I'm looking for like Ruination, right? Like they get a bunch of eight eights and then we Ruination, right? Like that. That's what I'm thinking with the Financier. Um, so we can make it. Or we could kill 188 with the Dawning Shadow, or just go absolutely nuts with Glorious Evolution, and we'll try that. Alright, trade these. I guess it's not really that great to have two of those out in play, is it? It's an awesome day for progress. How do I get Molten Breath like every single time with this card? So just doing that to, again, maybe, maybe we hit Ruination. Maybe we get lucky with that. Like Surge here. Yeah, it's probably my best play. Been looking for something else to do, but I just don't really see anything else I like. The 8 mana production surge and the 6 mana assembly line have effectively cost the exact same since we are refilling our spell mana. The only difference is like we don't get the glimpse beyond. But effectively, it costs the, the same. We still have our 6 mana. Do 
we maybe hit ruination? Shock blast. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. This is going to be difficult to win. <laughs> yeah, it's never easy not having a champ, that's true. It does make life difficult. Really, the thing that's going to cost us is everything being slow. That's going to be... Uh, what's going to hold us back? We have to get pretty lucky with this with this thing. I don't know what we could hit, you know, like hit like a harsh winds. It is time for you to prove yourself, my warrior. I dare not serve any other, my lady. All well, of these were fast speed. You know, we could fast speed. Shoot that, shoot that. A true Fregorian welcome. Wow, they still get that 8 8 anyway. GG's. Good hand opponent. Thralls is a great deck. And so, not playing Aftershock, I think that we're going to be pretty far down in this matchup most of the time. The like, I think that's like, going to be a pretty poor matchup for us. Unless we have Aftershock. Because they even had that Avalanche, which was clutch of like getting rid of my 8-2. Like that Frostbite card was really nice. They, yeah, they had everything you wanted. And obviously multiple 8-8s on round 5. Good hand. Alright, Tom Kench, Soraka. So this is going to be the kind of matchup where we want to have like thermogenic beams to try to slow down their champions. Thralls always bricks for you. I've I've done really well with thralls whenever I play it. I always yeah I'm I'm kind of like how my opponent just had. I usually have really good hands and do really well with thralls. It's it's a high variance deck though for sure. All right, Akiface, thanks for the donation deck there for a Jace Swain. I am here to help. All right, we'll play some Jace Swain. I understand. I've been propagating quite the appetite. I don't think we have to go this way, because if I if I go for the Tom Kench and they can save the Tom Kench, then kinda no matter what we do, it's it's bad for me. This makes them use like all their healing, you know, they this makes it so they don't get any free healing. Thanks to the Soraka. I don't love any of these. So I don't even really like this atrocity, I just don't care about the others. The others just put a couple of bodies in play, and bodies aren't really that great in this matchup. And yeah, we already have a whole lot of bodies anyway. I proper my allyship, demon to star child. Oh, Tom, there may be redemption for you yet. That's really disappointing. So quite obviously from here, oh, I if I knew that they had another a, a Star Spring and another Soraka, you know, I'd much rather have try to shoot the Tom Kench. But you don't always have that information.
good that we got a guiding touch out of there. You leave me no choice. Live with purpose. Come on, then. Master the power of the stars. So it's looking like we need it aftershocks, right? I'm trying, but they keep wandering off. That's but that's basically what's going on here is just we need aftershocks. These have been two great hands though for our opponents, too. Like this is a, a perfect Soraka Tom Kench hand. They had a you know perfect thrall hand. Exactly what you want. there's a will, there's a meal. Good games. So if it may be if these kind of decks are become become popular, landmarks may come back. Both of those hands of like those those last two games that we lost, the first two decks that we're playing would have lost to those 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 games also. Like those were good hands with really difficult matchups. So now we're facing Jace Lux. So what do we want to do against Jace Lux? I want to keep these two. I guess I want to keep assembly line also. Yeah, because I think you just want to keep playing your six cost spells. Remember, we're the ones who make progress happen. Well, good start for them. I don't think we need to play a six cost spell on round four. It's an awesome day for progress. This is where the magic happens. The tech's good. Uh, not sure about the workers, though. Oh, I would love to. I will right, we'll clear up some room. sure about this harrowing for like you know not having any champions or anything like that i'm not sure if we really need this harrowing Come on. Go, Perfectly fine with that. You know, Sharp Sight's a valuable card to save stuff, and I don't feel like that card's like that great to save, but awesome I don't know, they did. I, I'm perfectly fine with that. Okay, playing this because it only costs one mana right now. Let's grab a champion. Play Heimer, we'd have three extra mana. We have a lot more cards than them. We just gotta stabilize the board and hope champions don't take over. Ship change. So I could play the production surge, but I like playing the forge workers because. Um, you know, even over Shock Blast, because I can have, like, my 3-3s three stay alive, block those. This, this puts me down to 4. Let me trade with one of them. Keep the other one alive. So 9 mana. Alright, let's do it. What seems to be the problem? Oh, 
Alright, so pretty scary. So again, they're down to two cards. So we got a lot more than that. Just need to stabilize. Basically, don't want to see Lux. I'm just not playing this Piercing Darkness, but we have to save the Piercing Darkness for champions. Back to back? Gross. I do have those. So this is just us. Uh, letting that happen. Glimpse Beyond. If I do that, we have uh, 9 mana next round. If I don't, we have 11. 11 is just like the wrong number of mana to have anyway with these 6 cost cards. I'll just wait. I don't think we need to glimpse me on. Maybe 11 was the right amount of mana to have. Heimer plus a 6. So this doesn't give any health. If they do Acceleration Gate, we can Shock Blast. Nothing beats field testing. So there, so that would give Jace two extra keywords. Hey, show me that again. Do I look for Mystic Shot? If I look for Mystic Shot and then they get tough, that's kind of a problem. Wait, do we have Mystic Shot in here? There's no Mystic Shot in this deck. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't look for Mystic Shot. Cool, Impact's good. Tough's fine. No Overwhelm over there. Alright, those are both fine. And we're looking good. I'm already taking over. This. There we go. Let's get random card. Okay, not so good. Another Heimer is a progress day. Progress day, very good. Gives us like a, you know, 9-9. Nine -nine. Yeah, Udivas says I love Heimer's music during his level but level up animation. I do too. That's it's so good. It's so satisfying. Like Heimerdinger is definitely a very satisfying champion to level up, even though it's like not really like that big of a deal getting these plus one plus one like at that point like once it's leveled up. Reaper, what's up? Just getting back into Rune Terror after a couple of months of break. What's everybody enjoying so far? Definitely recommend the brand new Path of Champions. Really enjoying that. That's. That's for sure. 
So highly recommend Path of Champions. And this is where we don't really need the Eager Apprentices. We had the one game earlier where Eager Apprentice was really good on round two. Now it's just kind of unnecessary. Eh, it's like, it's like I could play it, but I don't have to play it. Mini Morph. That's a good one. Mini Morph, pretty good. All right, there we go. Two and two. Calculated. Heimer's so cool. You miss old Heimer Vi? Yeah, you could probably get back into, you know, build a very similar deck. I think you could play Heimer Vi still. What's up, Saigumba? Saigumba, I played your Jace Lux deck uh, that you put in Discord earlier. Elise Kindred Vi. I think you could. Of course, you can also just play Jace instead of Vi. Like, I just think I'm going to keep all of this. Like, I could see sending back the assembly line, but I kind of want to just keep all this. Not a very good block, but I don't know. Maybe it will help Elise not level up, getting rid of that spider. You know, like maybe they play two spiders here or something. I don't know. But let's definitely get the three threes in. They can fight with Elise. To see the world. You did. Yes. They didn't kill my handler. We can make a new handler. Oh, it's the options. We can make a new handler. Or we try to get Jason play first. Let's attack. Let's give them priority. Why would you block there and... I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I'm not I'm not letting Kindred stay around. So good thing we gave them priority. And that's kind of why we have these Piercing Darkness, right? Because Piercing Darkness has been really good at killing these five mana champions. Lots of five mana champions running around. Gotta be able to kill them. Our weakness has been Oh, there's the level up elise. Our weakness has been the landmark. Those are two, our two losses. Does Jace Lux work similar to Karma Lux? Yeah, I'd probably say so. So they're going to have a least challenge, like one of my things, and then it marks the other. What do I want to do? I can play five five Jace. Give Jace Challenger and try to have Jace to kill this Kindred. I feel like killing Kindred is going to be worth it. They'll probably have like their... Yeah, let's just do that. We're going to have to try to kill old Kindred. That's unexpected. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that. Huh. Alright, so we can definitely assume that they're going to have a one damage spell, like a, you know, a Vile Feast, right? Like, we can assume they have Vile Feast. Oh, wait. This just doubles, right? So it does this? Well, it, okay, it will just double on the stack, right? Even if... Uh, might as well, I don't care about these 1-1s. One might as well do this. Hey, show me that again. Yeah, so even if they respond by Vile Feasting the Jace, it'll still double, right? 
Yeah, we still killed the kindred. Cool. Alright, so I know I could have glimpsed beyond right there. But I'm gonna just hold up my mana for iterative improvement. And like I wanna play Heimer next round with a good amount of mana. I really thought about passing whenever they were passing with the 6 mana, but then it's also like, well, why not attack, but, alright. Oh wait, I didn't enter improvement that, no. Okay. Guess we're gonna have to copy finance here. Oh, glorious evolution. That will be glorious. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It to the it's than the they got two cards. We have Glorious Evolution. I think we're fine. I think we're fine. Vi stands for vicious. I guess Atrocity. With the augments. Shock blast. Just want to pass. Guess I should have played this forger tomorrow first. Get this other body out first. Gotta love the landmarks having augment. Oh no, handler! Give everybody plus one plus one. I'll never let go, handler. All right, three and two. All right, so another good showing with another Jace deck. I liked this one too. All three of the decks today. I liked quite a bit. Jace and Heimer both looked really strong. Does look like maybe we should be playing a couple Aftershocks in, right? Like that's really what we struggled with more than anything was the landmarks. The two games that we lost in this video were def definitely games that we would have lost with either of our other decks. Um, you know, like they both would have lost those games also uh, to the Soraka Tom Kench. You know, Tom Kench is definitely a, a difficult one to stop and uh, just Star Spring, right? Because, you know, we're a slower deck in that Star Spring win condition. And then also the Thralls, you know, like that that was a really fast beating us down hand with Thralls. Um, you know, so those, those are two different, difficult things to stop for us. So you could protect against those with Aftershocks. Uh, you could also just try not to get paired against that kind of stuff because that stuff isn't that popular right now. But that could uh, be something in the future, you know, in the next couple of days. That if more people are playing Jace and Heimerdinger decks, then maybe more people try to fight those with Landmark decks and so on. And so that's something to keep your eyes out for. If you um, are trying these kind of decks out and you're losing to Landmarks, that's something you could put in here. Uh, but then you got to, you know, kind of figure out what to take out. Um, I liked the Eager Apprentice, but I could also see just playing two of them, right? Like maybe you don't need all three, but they are good against aggro. That could be a card that you could, you could uh, take out. The Thermo Beam, also kind of the same kind of thing. You know, like we do already have Darkness, Shock Blast, and you know, we're putting in Aftershock, so maybe you don't need that Thermo. Um, Glimpse Beyond was okay, but, you know, maybe that's not necessarily a three of... I don't know where, where we'd fit in another one. Maybe Assembly Line. Maybe you only play two of those? Yeah, maybe like one of these cards is only a two of instead of a three of if you want to fit in another Aftershock, right? But the I could definitely see, like, that would be the easiest thing, is Trim, trim an Eager Apprentice... I'd still want a couple because, you know, it's so good early on, um, but it's not a card you want to draw late. But that could be, like, the first one for for an Aftershock. Putting in a second Aftershock in here would be tough. I would probably say either the Thermo, a Glimpse Beyond, a Time Trick, or one of these sixes. You know, so whichever one of the, those cards is your least favorite, you know, you'd be trimming one of those for a second Aftershock if you want to bring them in. So that's how you would uh, get in some Aftershocks if you feel like you need them. But besides that, 
Jason Heimer looked really good today. Piltover and Zahn definitely looking good. All right, so those y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button and leave those comments and let me know how which one of these three decks was your favorite or um, you know what else are you doing with, with Jason Heimer and new Piltover and Zahn or Path of Champions or you know anything. Just leave those comments. I always love talking Rune Terra. But that's going to be it for Jace Heimer. So as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.